Okay, we're back with part two of Bill King on Musicians in Bars Getting Beer. By the way, we're at the Jazz Bistro, beautiful place downtown Toronto. Come here often? I come here when I can. Beautiful place. Have yeah. you played in here? Oh, yes, yeah. Great place. With which band? Uh, solo piano. Oh, and okay. actually here with Gavin Hope, too. Oh, great. Yeah. And so what else is happening outside of the Beaches Jazz Fest with Bill King? Uh, basically, what I'm doing... Uh, Steadily is two radio shows and uh, writing for two columns each week. So I write, uh, I write uh, an essay each week for Cashbox magazine. <coughs> then I write a weekend column for FYI Music. Ca. Uh, then I have the radio. I work with Ted Woolishan on the on News Talk 10 10 Saturdays from uh, 11 to 3. We do the Ted Woolishan show, and I play piano and and hang out with Ted and just yak. And then. Uh, the new show was me and Tabby Johnson, but Tabby's gone now for the summer, but it's at CIUT on Thursday mornings. And that is basically an interview show and uh, a quirky show where I, I like to hunt down interesting music, uh, interviews of uh, great, just some odd things, and then feature some gospel music. And then right now I'm starting two more production projects, and one's with the wonderful vocalist Selena Evangeline. We're doing a duet record in uh, June, and then I'm doing a duet record with John McDermott in uh, August. So it's in, in between that is photography jobs, working a variety of, you know, of uh, shooting concerts. We'll be shooting the TD Jazz Festival, Illuminato, Montreal Jazz, and then there's um, some other specific projects in between there. I'll be doing too. So. For photography, and we, we're we're sort of uh, sponsored by Panasonic, which sort of looks after me and Christine, my wife, with uh, the latest gear. So we're out trying that out, and they all have a Panasonic Gallery in their company that will run and feature the photographs that we shoot. We'll pick out the the highlights of that, and they'll be part of Panasonic's feature. That's great. Last year, some photographers uh, entered the contest. Is that part of? Um what Panasonic is doing for the Beaches Jazz? No, pa Panasonic's not tied in with the festivals now. Oh, okay. uh, they were with uh, TD Jazz uh, the year before, but we just have a relationship with Panasonic because uh, of uh, using their equipment to start with. We, we were using the Lumex series. We started the F1, then the GX1, and, uh, and now the GX7 and a variety of lenses, and we built up a great rapport with the company that we enjoy. Uh, shooting with the Micro Four Thirds systems. Uh, they're much easier for us to use. The lenses are, are spectacular. Uh, shooting video with them and uh, just pretty much into their products. I, I just sort of uh, fell into the Panasonic system because they're very uh, innovative in the, in the items and they're always, always coming with something new. So it's, uh, it's fun for us because the lenses are like, uh, Leica makes a certain amount of their, their lenses, and so they're affordable within a range. You get a Leica lens with the kind of quality glass that you would have in a much more expensive lens, and they, the, the uh, sharpness is beautiful. So. so what model are you shooting on this year? Uh, GX7s. Both of us, but we, we went out and bought the GX7s. We just love the camera so much, and so every summer we, all go, we usually go out and buy a new camera, and... Uh, because so much changes during, during, the, during the year, new things come in. I mean, right now they have 4K, and we wouldn't even begin to do that because we don't even have a computer that could handle that amount of memory or, uh, you know, it would just overwhelm anything you had right now. But uh, they're pretty, pretty incredible things. Hmm. So do you want to talk at all about uh, history, how you got into music many, many years ago? Well, that's pretty much out there. It's just, uh, I write about it every week for Cashbox and, and for them. So, I mean, there's, if you go to Cashbox, you'll see there's the American Road Stories, uh, which covers a lot of that in Greenwich Village and stuff. And then there's uh, all the Cashbox stuff and, and all the FY stuff has to do with playing with different bands and stuff. So, it's pretty much out there online, so. Okay, and is there BillKing.com? No. And I, I don't have, something like that? no, no, I, do, I don't even have yeah, a website. Yeah. I just use Facebook. And then I have on Facebook is Bill King Photography, and then uh, essays, images, and uh, interviews, which ties in with the book. But that's where all these weekly columns go. 
So I see. I just sort of separate it there, and then the radio show with me and Tabby, that's online too. But it's all through Facebook because it just seems like a, a, a good way to have everything sourced together. Sure. You know, and uh, and, and and come from that. You know, uh, people don't visit people. They just don't visit uh, uh, anymore. Blogs, personal websites, or even blogs. To get somebody to read your blog is just uh, you'd have to go pick them up and drive them and <laughs> set them in front of the computer. Yeah. Well, I read yours. So. Well, you know, it's, it's just very hard. To, uh, you know, they were saying it the other day. It, on Twitter, if you don't have like about 500,000 to a million people, nobody's reading your stuff. So you sort of have to be, have to build up a large following you know, to do that. I was like actually looking today on YouTube to make to make a million dollars on YouTube, you have to have 500 million views. So, That's, I mean, yeah. you figure, and YouTube seems to be the place where people are going. I mean, they're, they're going to these things because everything is there and everything's changed to streaming. They're not even downloading it anymore. No. They can find anything they want anywhere. You know? My YouTube's at 30,000 visits. Uh, right. Or 30,000 views. So, yeah, I don't expect to get up to that. You no, know, it's tough. It's tough breaking through. It's tough getting, getting people to... You know, spend a moment to look at things. It depends on who it is. And sure. It's hit and miss. If you get, if you get somebody, uh, like we got really, when we, it's very funny because we, Christine shot Chris Thomas King in Montreal maybe seven years ago. And it's just on a song and we put the clip up and then it's 240,000 views. And it continually always has great views. I shot uh, Carrie Underwood with, with the Rolling Stones just a quick clip, mm -hmm. clip of them together, okay. and that's 270,000 views. Brilliant. But there's a big difference. Now you, now you go from that down to 30 and 20,000, and, and that still it looks good to you, yeah. but uh, there's still, it's major yeah, people. No, money, right? no but it's, ma it's major people in play, but still, yes. there's just so much out there. So. I find it amusing, though, that people with 50 or 100 views are doing all the advertising. <laughs> Well, they're trying to get people there, but I, I don't know. It's the same way, you know, on Facebook, uh, you know, I, I like to follow the stats. Of, you put a photograph up, and all of a sudden there's like six or 700 views on the photograph really quick. Mm -hmm. And then you you look there, and they're trying to charge you $30 to boost it. Boost it. Right. I did it once, and it brought nobody up. It brought nothing. It was just giving money away. Just giving money away. Yeah, I, didn't, I didn't see the point, so... And so you talked a little bit about the jazz community. Do you want to uh, yeah. give us your take on Toronto's jazz community? I really don't know what it is now. It's, it's different. Mark. Well, I think it's different. I think it's changed. And, and uh, there's kind of a mix of a lot of things going on because the jazz community was easy to focus when you had a Rob McConnell, a Doug Riley, uh, a Dave McMurdle, a Mo Kaufman. And you had all those guys because they had come out of the 50s and the 60s and stuff. And even even uh, Guido Basel, and they had played so much and were out there so often and had so many followers that whenever they said they'd come right here, and Rob would come in this place with his tent tent, it'd be packed for the week. If he did uh, TD Jazz, that would be your lunchtime big band, you know, or Phil Nimmons and Nine. So there was a big audience for these guys. These guys were the stars. Now when they passed away, left a big hole. You don't have the draws anymore, so it's it's kind of splintered. So none of the none of the groups or artists that uh, came after that have been able to have the same impact. You know, they got their following, but it, it, it's it's tough to, and that, and then that applies to the international scene in the U.S. too, since those guys, the major guys, have all passed away. Who is the who are the main who are the people that are draw? Well, it's very small now. Yeah. Hmm. Right. Great. Well, thanks for being okay. on Musicians in Bars Getting Beer. And uh, thanks to the Jazz Vistro for having us and Ori. And we'll talk to you again soon. Beaches Jazz coming up this summer. Take care, Bill. All right, Bill.